Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another segment in the Bossy Cafe. This is a follow-up from yesterday's story. Um, today, we're going to delve deeper into yesterday. Because the, the who is pretty obvious by now. So now the why is so important. Now when we get into the why, the main factor of the why is the individuals involved. It's because that individual is the one that they initially said was the rat. That individual was initially the one that tried to expose who the true rat was. But unfortunately, you know, everything happens in due time. We found a different outlet, so now we're on um, the road to the truth, road to exposure. So, Uno B, ladies and gentlemen, chimed in and called in with me again this morning. So before we move into move on to the next segment, we need to break down why those documents yesterday were so important. We need to break down the authenticity of those doc- documents. And then we also need to make sure that you guys truly understand who he is, why he's so relevant to this indictment, and why it meant so much when it was said that he was, you know, cooperating. Why did people actually want to throw him under the bus? So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy. He actually called in. He chimed in. So you'll be able to hear it from his his mouth. The horse's mouth itself. Um, the next segment, part three, the video I'm going to actually be doing is the transcripts. We're going to actually start getting into the sentencing transcripts. And the first person we're going to touch on is Magoo. So, ladies and gentlemen, tune in for that Magoo intro- introduction video. Hope you enjoy. But that won't be till tomorrow if I, if I confuse you. But let's go. We out. All right. So we got Uno B on the phone. So Uno. Wow. Yo, shout it out, man. Let everybody know you send your love. Send your shout it out, man. Just leave out, man. Uno B, man. Jazz O, man. Queens on the phone. Oh, that shit. So, ladies and gentlemen, y'all seen yesterday, we covered the introduction. And the statement of reason. Um, he chimed in yesterday on the call in and broke it down to us step by step, page by page. Now there were some people who came through and made certain comments in regards to the authenticity. Now, when upon hearing these comments, he decided he he, he wanted to chime in that to just discredit any type of attempt to discredit what we're doing here because it's so authentic, it's so real. And at the completion of this, like I said from the beginning of this, we will be providing you with the case number for all of you to go see it yourself. So, Uno, tell them how you feel about that, what you had to say in regards to that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. You know, the court, the court of public opinion has, 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 has no restrictions, you know what I'm saying? I, I know that for a fact. So, you know, people always... Really, Deserve the right to feel however we want to feel. But that's not why I'm here, you know what I'm saying? I'm here, I'm here for clarity, man. I'm here to grab the attention of the real. That's it, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying fuck nobody else. I just don't give a fuck about nobody else. It's only for the real. Now, first and foremost, man, my plea agreement is very clear. Now, you know, it has to be read. One thing about when you're dealing with the feds, man, you got to do with due diligence. You got to read it. You know what I mean? If you don't read it and you don't comprehend it, you're going to find yourself in the world of hurt. Now, I found a plea agreement which is called the 11C1C. Now, an 11C1C plea agreement, as it breaks down on the first page of my plea agreement, sentence, it says, because this plea is offered pursuant to federal rule of criminal procedure, 11C1C, if the court accepts the plea agreement, the court may not impose a greater sentence they agreed by the parties in this plea agreement. Let me clear right there. It goes on, on page two, at the bottom of seven, letter G. The parties agree that the United States may seek a departure or variance from the applicable guideline range calculated pursuant to paragraph seven of the plea agreement. However, 
the United States agrees that it will not seek an upward departure or variance from the applicable guideline range that results in more than 36 months imprisonment above the applicable guideline range as determined by the district court of the sentence. So this, that, was a, that was my plea agreement. You know what I'm saying? That's what I agreed to. Unfortunately, the judge did some bullshit, as they know to do. Now, the statement of reason, at the top of it, it makes it very clear that this is not for public disclosure. That's on page one. If you go to page four, which is the last page, at the bottom, it has the judge's signature in the United States of America, district judge stamp. This cannot be duplicated, man. That's what I'm saying. To anybody that had the fucking misfortune of dealing with the FBI or the feds on any level, they know that your statement of reason cannot be duplicated. So just know that, man. If you don't know, then ask someone who has the misfortune of dealing with these people. The statement of reason is is undisputed. This is straight from the federal judge. Now, if there was any 5K1, if there was any plea agreement to cooperate, it would have made it clear in these boxes. It doesn't. Ultimately, I was given a sentence above my guideline range, and at the bottom of page 3 of 4, it says state the basis for the variance. And this is what the judge said. The court will grant an upward variance of nine months, which is justified by the post plea agreement action of the defendant that are threatening and intimidating. The fact that the defendant was going around actively collecting paperwork for co conspirators was threatening in nature, along with the phone calls and letters post plea agreement. Now, you know, yeah, well, and I know the people out there, man, they know what post means. That means before the plea agreement. So they used against me all the, all, all the actions and all the evidence that they had before I pled guilty. They used that to give me an even bigger sentence. Whatever letters that they caught, whatever phone calls they caught on the wire, they used that to give me a greater sentence. Above my guideline range. That's what my statement of reason is, man. And that's what my plea agreement was. Now, you know, um, some of the comments that was brought to my attention said something to the effect of why did I plead guilty? I shouldn't have pled guilty. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, I should have went to trial. I want, I want, I want, I want you to know, Jazz, more than anything, you feel me saying, but I understand I'm speaking to your audience, man. And I've never been a victim of peer pressure. You know what I'm saying? You know me. I'm a, I'm a made man, dude. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I come along. I die alone. You know, I choose to affiliate myself and, 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 and to embrace brotherhood and family values. But at the end of the day, man, I'm going to do I'm going to do what I got to do for me. You see what I'm saying? I don't go out the back door. I go out the front door. So my co-defendants was made aware of me wanting to plead guilty. The reason why I plead guilty was many reasons. One, I had no paid attorney. The Fed confiscated my money, had it fucked up. Neither one of my two co defendants had paid attorneys either to just put that and establish that. That you know, both of them went to trial with court appointed attorneys, which was asinine to me to begin with, but you know, that, that was their choice. Number two, the evidence against me was overwhelming. I had to understand what a legal conspiracy was. A racketeering conspiracy is different from a regular conspiracy, a drug conspiracy. In a drug conspiracy, the feds have to prove that you knew your co defendants and that y'all conspired to commit this crime. And they have to prove that the crime was committed. In a racketeering conspiracy, they don't have to prove that. Now, the racketeering conspiracy was designed to destroy the mafia. And it did. Because, you know, you had the big bosses and you had the soldiers. The soldiers would get arrested, but the big bosses would go free because the FBI couldn't, couldn't uh, uh, connect them. Because there was, there, was, there was barely no dialogue between the bosses and the soldiers. 
lack of team conspiracy fixed that fucking problem. And then lack of team conspiracy allows the Fed to, to prosecute the alleged criminal organization, man. And so once I understood that, once I understood the, 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 the aspect of conspiracy, and I don't have to know my co defendants in order to be found guilty of this particular type of conspiracy, I knew the jig was up to me. Also, also, their secret weapon, which was phone taps, wiretaps, Title three wiretaps. They had that. You know, I'm not going to get on here and tell you who else they had it on, but they had it on me. There's no question about that. You know, they're not federal on the phone, visiting people, wearing wires on the visit, on prison visits. So, you know, 90%, 90% of the evidence against me, against us, was shit that was saying out of the knowledge. You know what I'm saying, too? A wiretap is a motherfucker, motherfucker, man. A wiretap is a motherfucker. So once I seen that that was 90% of the evidence against me, once I seen that I didn't have the funds to a paid lawyer, once I seen that I was out of hand and I had 83 co-defendants who were dropping like flies signing cooperation agreements, and once I understood what a racketeering conspiracy was, and I realized that the maximum penalty for a racketeering conspiracy was 20 years. I knew I got the plea guilty because if the maximum penalty was 20 years, I know I could get a single digit plea, a, 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 a plea bargain. I know that. I did a trial before, and that'll come out as well. I went to trial on another charge. I know I didn't even commit, it, and I lost, and I got 25 life for it. So I went to trial before. I played guilty before. You just got to be smart about it. And I did what I thought was the smartest move. And this is why I played guilty. Now, let's be very clear. When I played guilty, Jazz, I wrote no statements. I made no allocution. I made no statements. I testified at no trials. And I signed no statements. You will only find my signature in any paperwork you see with this case number that you're going to give your audience when all this is coming back. My signature is only on my plea agreement. And my plea agreement is silent. I made no statements. No, it's good. I pled guilty to who the state said I was. My charge. The evidence against me, guilty. I'm gone. Hey, salute to that. Uh, salute to staying solid, nigga. But now, let me ask you a question. Now, I know you, for those people out there that's still going to be ignorant and not understand you having to do what was best for you at the time, were there ever moments where you regretted it? Or was your decision based off of your knowledge of what you already knew? Like, as far as how your other codies well, you were know, going about things? Well, you know, man, to be, to be straight up with you at, at all times, man. I've been in prison since 96. So, you know, and I was taught by really the protocol that learning the law is, is, is most important. Legal research is most important, man. And so that I was fortunate in that regard that when this case happened, I was already in prison 20 years. So I did my legal research. And so the decision I made to plead guilty, once I knew that my decision to plead guilty we only reflect on me. I'm not testifying. I'm not writing those statements. I'm not signing those statements. I'm not incriminating anybody. It's my situation. Hell no, I ain't got no regrets. Hell no, I don't have no regrets. Because if I would have went to trial, I knew I would have lost. The odds of me losing, the percentage of me losing, was 95%. Because of the type of case, it was a racketeering conspiracy case, which is a world of mouth case. We had, they had us, they had me on wire tax, they had federal informants, didn't indeed win a wire. So much was said that you really can't get around what was said out your fucking mouth. And I had no paid attorney. 
She ended up becoming a co-defendant, if you don't mind answering that for the record. She became a co-defendant for this, right? And this is something important for people to understand, right? As my wife, there was no problem in anything she was doing for me. She was my liaison. She committed no crimes, no drugs, no guns, no no, 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 no. As my wife, she was a liaison for me. You know what I mean? She called my family, she called my kids, she called my brothers, my sisters, because I'm in prison. Anything she did for me, she did for me. What the Senate said was she stepped out of bounds and she allegedly started to do things for co defendants. And this is what they have in a while. Now, my wife, I've known her, my ex wife, I've known her since 2003. And she went to visit one of my co-defendants one time in her whole entire life and never again. One of my co-defendants, man, his, uh, his girlfriend was killed, tragically. And um, my wife knew this woman. And my co-defendant was very distraught about it, man. He was very sad about it. And he requested that my wife visit him to talk about that because they knew each other. My cousin said it, man, kid is very spiritual, man. And um, I was in the box at the time. I was in Calcourt. So she asked me, yo, can I go? Boy? I'm like, yeah, go up there, man. You know what I mean? Console him if that's what he needs. You know what I'm saying? And she went up there. Unfortunately, the feds was investigating us at this time. And they called that a game meeting. First visit. First and last visit of their life. And so these are the things that took place. You know, social media. You know, uh, 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 and my wife made a mistake. And said a lot of things on social media without my knowledge, man. And got caught up in the hype. Got caught up in the whole ordeal of being someone that she was not. Gra- uh, 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 gravitating towards all this attention. Attention from people that she didn't know. Attention from people I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, that's the price of fame. That's the price of notoriety. That's the price of clout. You know, for all those that chase it, man. 
You know what I'm saying? You become responsible to people that you don't even know. And so, you know, that's what she got jammed up at, and they just charged her with conspiracy. She ended up pleading guilty. First time ever being arrested a day in her life. And she ended up pleading guilty and getting sentenced to 21 months. You know what I'm saying? She did 18 months in Pennsylvania, Connecticut, did her time, came home, kept her mouth shut. But that's what jammed her up, doing things outside of me. Because the point being, if you did anything outside of of, of, of your husband, you're doing it in furtherance of this criminal enterprise. And they had her on the wire. She couldn't deny these things. You know, it's on the wire that you're doing these things. It's on social media, it's on Facebook that you're doing these things outside of your husband. So, you know, anything you did for your husband was in regards to your national, in regards to your relationship. And anything you did outside of that is in furtherance of the own racketeering like conspiracy, man. And, you know, that's why she took a fall. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. Forget all the propaganda and slander. You heard it from Uno Be Himself. Before before I cut this off, is there anything else you'd like to say, uh, Big Bro? Yeah, you, you know, that's, man, it's, it's, it's so many different things. It's so many different things, man. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, man. Ultimately, you know, those transcripts, you know, uh, the uh, the uh, the sentence and transcripts, that's on the way. You know what I mean? And and and, and, and what it's going to tell me is it's going to be accumulation of my plea agreement and my statement of reasons. The plea agreement is the plea that I pled guilty to. The statement of reasons is the reason the judge gave me the sentence. And my sentence and transcripts that you're going to receive today is going to show that. You said what? You said you, you said it again. The phone broke up. You what you say about the transcripts again? The phone broke up. Uh, what I said was, my sentence and transcripts, which you, you should have within the next ten days, that's what you're requesting from me. Is going to be accumulation of my plea agreement and the statement of reason. The plea agreement is the plea that I signed. This is the plea agreement. It's the only piece of paper I've ever signed in the sentence. And the statement of reason is the reason the judge gave me the sentence. My plea, my, 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 my sentence and transcript is going to um, break all that down. And last but not least, man, call it right or right. You know what I'm saying? See, don't, don't speculate. Don't speculate, man. Don't ever speculate when it, when it comes to these type of things, man. Call it right or right. You feel what I'm saying? You see a 5K1, you call it 5K1. Know this for a fact, man. That the federal government, they're not protecting nobody. Nobody, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't fuck if you write on Donald Trump. They're going to expose you. And as, as what you do. This is what it's capable to keep. There's no need to speculate when the paperwork is available. So, you know, I know you said that you need my voice. But more than anything, man, the paperwork is there. Because I could tell you anything. I could tell you the sky is green. If we lived on Mars, you know what I'm saying? Right. The paperwork is everything, man. You got to pay attention to what it's saying. You see 5K1, you call 5K1. You see cooperation, you call cooperation. Straight up and down, man. From page 1 to page 100. So, no games, man. so now with that and being said, quality. so with that being said, with, uh, all due, with that being said, in all due respect, what do you got to say for the individuals that feel you fall in the category of being a rat because you pled guilty. What how what do you gotta say to people who feel that way? How do you address that? This is what I'm saying to you, like like, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no categories, man. What the fuck is wrong with these niggas, man? Ain't no categories, man. Either you're a rat or you're not. Either you're a rat or you're not. Many men have pled guilty and signed five K one cooperation assistance to the United States Peer Group. They snitches. They snitches for that. There's just no big ends of us about that. And the paperwork will reveal that. Not the court of public opinion. The paperwork will reveal what type of plea you sign. Why did the judge give you a sentence? That will be revealed. So those men, those women who sign those type of agreements, they rat. They dishonorable. Straight up. That's what I say to that. Oh, I so because... 
So because you didn't get the five K one, because you didn't get the five K one. So, so since the five K one didn't get no. And they get the room. They get the room thirty one. I mean, they get the room thirty four, which gives the judge the opportunity to get them a sentence below their guideline range. That's what the five K one is about. That's what the five K one is all about. So when you, I'm going to send you. Right? No, right, hold on. Let's. I'm going to send you a plea agreement from one of my co-defendants because I got eighty three of them who pled guilty. And sign the 5K agreement. You're going to see the difference, and you're going to be able to read it to the people. You're going to see the difference. You're going to see exactly what the government is saying. It says the system to the United States. It's a plea agreement just like mine. All plea agreements look the same, except they, that particular category that's inside of it. So, uh, but, but for those who are claiming that if you plead guilty and you have co defendants, and you can get you to your charge that you are right, then, 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 then those people are fools. All right, quick and question. There's so many fools out there, man. I don't want to spend too much time addressing fools. This is why I gave you the example of two solid men. Oh. Five solid men. All right, what quick question before I forget. I want to get this quick right. question out. Huh? I want to get this quick question out before I forget. <laughs> now, um... Damn, I almost forgot it already. So now, all right. When you pled guilty at any time, did they make you make any implications of anyone? Did they make you implicate anyone in any shape, form, or fashion? Because you said you're going to send us the minutes anyway. I'm just asking for the record before they get here because I know this is going to end up... I'm trying to circumvent certain questions by answering them already. So... Right. So, like, my, my my question is, at any given time in your plea agreement, did they make you say anything that could have been incriminating to any of your codees, like implicating anyone? Absolutely not. But now watch this, right? Anybody that has, that has dealt with the court system, the court gives you the opportunity to speak before you get sentenced. You know what I'm saying to you? The court gives you the opportunity to speak, and that's called an uh, uh, allocution. You know what I'm saying to you? Now, you're going to see in my sentencing minutes that I didn't allocate anything. I made it very clear. Now, nah, I don't want to talk about nothing. Now, nah, I'm good. I ain't got nothing to say. But just ask me, you got something you want to say? Nope. I ain't got nothing I want to say. You know what I'm saying to you? Now, during my sentence, during my sentence, like it says here on my statement of reasons, it says, post to the agreement action, Along with phone calls and letters, post plea agreements, they use they use wiretaps against me at my census. You're gonna read it for yourself. They use wiretaps that they got me on against me to give me a sentence above my guideline range. You're gonna see that wiretaps that they got me on the phone with my co defendants the said, federal agents testified during my, my, my citizen hearing. You're going to see that. You understand? Agent Fallon was his name. Yeah, we got these wiretaps from Google, and this is a one with zero. This is a one with zero, and such, 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 such. And, you know, the feds are asking, what does this mean? What does this mean? And then you understand, breaking down what they mean to me, this was used against me to give me a higher sentence. You're going to see that. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't do nothing about what the feds are using against me to give me a higher sentence. They're using wiretaps that they call. Of me speaking and co defendant speaking. And it's being used against me. It wasn't used to help me. It was used against me. So there was wiretaps where there's... So there was wiretaps where, of course, everybody get caught slipping if you get caught on a wiretap. But there's wiretaps allegedly... Huh? That's what this case is about, Jazz. You know what I'm saying? That was 90% of the cases with wiretaps. Niggas was in prison for over 20 years. They don't got us. They don't got us in North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? They don't got us out there. They don't got us in Vegas. They don't got us in Cali. They don't got us in Brooklyn on the street doing nothing. So the 80%, 90% of these cases based on wiretaps. The motherfuckers set out their mouth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. You know, but, but no, to answer your question, no, no, 
I didn't say a word, not one word, zero, zero. I think it's a transcript to show that. I didn't say a word, nothing. Did they use wiretaps to give me a greater sentence? Yes. And you're going to see that. You're going to see that. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so salute. But you got a lot of paperwork. You got a lot of paperwork, man. So, you know, that's what you do. That's it, man. The people going to see what it is. That's a fact. That's a fact. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. There you have it. You heard it. Make sure you hit the like, you press subscribe, and leave any questions and comments in the comment section. To the next one, I'm off this. Yo, Uno, send your shout out, say your goodbyes. Yeah. We off this, baby. You already know, man. You already know, man. We're going to keep the queen. That's it. By all means, man. That's it. That's shit. Ain't you the same one, same one That same nigga that was capping on social media Said you ain't lacking, ain't lacking neither I hope your keyboard match your knuckle check And you can't tell me I gotta see it Come out the house, stop using your mouse And don't be a mouse Niggas be cap, only time we slide is playing in baseball Me on this ball off the base In the state char duck me and fed charge Fresh out the pot, I'm making it alive You know that I'm icy, niggas don't like me Bitch be salty so I keep it spicy <laughs> Like a jalapeno in a new tuxedo I be heavy sauce on the drip In a pair of fire garments on the armor car Like a Luciano in this bitch I ain't no soprano but I make C no stack higher When I hit the bank, cause these niggas pussy So big ass stuff but he got sugar in his tank Got no lacking, no guard Lights came with action, what's the Make him a movie, pressure the mute it Just pop out, nigga, don't talk I got a bike, nigga, don't ball I keep it lit, nigga, don't spar You think it can't happen till you call lock And nigga, your girls give me a hold on Ain't you the same one, same one That same nigga that was capping on social media Said you ain't lacking, ain't lacking neither I hope your keyboard matching up the check And you can't tell me I gotta see it Pop out the house, stop using your mouse And don't be a mouse I'm on this beat cause I like it In a free world with a ice pick With a thought of niggas on Rikers I'm turned up with a white bitch Chill a farm car with no license I don't act him if I don't like him But I met him with a rifle Moonwalk him like Michael Can't talk right now, she got a mouthful Across your face with a scalpel You self-snitch with your mouth do Fuck with your plot like a prostitute I ain't a killer, but I do what I gotta do I did so much what I gotta prove Go ape shit like go home with a tell on Got a fell on Right here on the waistline Catch you lacking on the side block Catch your head shot on the same block That your man died, your mama cried God damn, it's a shame, right? Front line, bro Day. Give a fuck if they had people with them niggas get shot in broad day. Ain't you the same one, same one That same nigga that was capping on social media Said you ain't lacking, ain't lacking neither I hope your keyboard match your knuckle check And you can't tell me I gotta see it Pop out the house, stop using your mouse And don't be a mouse Go. Put some respect on my name, you think it's a game? I pull up and flame shit Show me the game where the stain is Get chest to chest when the bank click Screw the fuck 12 nigga, oh well Cause I'm back on my bullshit Extended the full clip Up in close range, it's still getting that whole shit Catch a flashback, turn your ass to a hashtag Since you wanna be a trendy nigga, don't offend me nigga Let it click to a simply nigga Since you wanna be a Wendy nigga Steady talking and capping Instead pop out, be about that action Checking that million and passing Or pussy just send me that address Bet I'm embarrassed niggas be thinking they building it Till they get killed and they end up in black bags Even though I don't brag like I said hashtag I only the same names cause he getting toe tags Pussy, fuck this little talk get next to me No cap, all facts, they strapped daily All black, big lock right here with me Knock with a knuckle, you can't fuck with me Ain't you the same one? Same one, that same nigga that was capping on social media Said you ain't lacking, ain't lacking neither I hope your keyboard match your knuckle check And you can't tell me I gotta see it Pop out the house, stop using your mouse And don't be a mouse, go Ain't you the same one, same one That same nigga that was capping on social media Said you ain't lacking, ain't lacking neither I hope your keyboard match your knuckle check And you can't tell me I gotta see it Pop out the house, stop using your mouse And don't be a mouse